We are bringing another trophy home to the 40 acres. Vic Schaefer and the Texas women's basketball team last night got their second Big 12 championship in just the last three seasons. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, once again, the women's basketball team wins the Big 12 tournament. A lot of momentum heading into the NCAA tournament where Texas has a real chance to win it all. We talk about that in the first segment. And then in the second segment, we're talking about the Texas baseball team and Texas men's basketball team. The baseball team got a big win over Incarnate Word last night at the dish. We discussed that. And then the basketball team prepares to defend their title at their version of the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City today against the Kansas State Wildcats. All of that and more on today's episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What a job by Vic Schaefer, right? And what a job by this Texas basketball team to overcome adversity, uh, you know, this year uh, and get to this point, right, to still be Big 12 champions. And, you know, coming off the disappointing loss last year, right, where they tried to defend their title and lost to Iowa State, they were able to get – you know, revenge and come back and win it this year. But they've gone so gone through so much, you know, notably uh, your best player, your point guard, your leader, Rory Harmon, tearing her ACL in December. And, you know, like I said, for them to still get to this point and still win the Big 12 championship is just a testament to Vic Schaefer, a testament to that staff and a testament to the type of players that he has recruited onto this team. And now in four years at the University of Texas, I mean, Vic Schaefer is one of the best basketball coaches in the world, period. You know, talking about men or women. And we knew when we brought him over from, Mississippi State, that we would be enhancing the basketball program at the University of Texas, that we would be better because we brought in Vic Schaefer. And that's certainly been the truth in four years. Now looking at two Big 12 championships in just that four year span since he came to the 40 acres. When you look at it in 2022, they knocked off Baylor, which was an upset at the time, 67 to 58 to win their first Big 12 championship since 2003. So the same way that Sark brought the football program, their first Big 12 championship since 2009. Um, you know, Vic Schaefer brought the women's basketball program their first Big 12 tournament championship since 2003. Last season, they were unable to successfully defend their title. They made it to the championship game, but they lost to Iowa State 61 to 51. But last night, they were able to get their revenge. They got their second championship in the last three seasons, beating Iowa State 70 to 53. And they not only beat Iowa State, they dominated Iowa State once again, winning that game by 17 points. This Texas women's basketball team played three games in the tournament, right? And they were plus 40 in those three games in the tournament. They beat Kansas by 16. Uh, they beat Iowa State by 17. And then I can't remember who else they played, but they won that game by seven. But in just three games in the Big 12 tournament, they were plus 40 in terms of point differentials. So offensively and defensively, they were hitting on all cylinders. And when you talk about a Vic Schaefer team, right, whether it was at Mississippi State, whether it's at Texas now, you know they're going to lead on the defensive end, right? They're going to hang their hat on defense and whatever they get on offense is a plus, right? But they're going to win the game on the defensive side of the ball. Every year on social media, Twitter, whatever, there's a video that pops up on my timeline of Vic Schaefer teaching people how to play defense, right? And he talks about, you know, getting your hands on you and riding the bull, right? And that's how they play defense and it emulates, right? When you watch this Texas women's basketball team, you see Vic Schaefer in the way that they play on the court, right? The effort, the grit, the intensity, that Texas fight, right? What he always talks about in his, in his interviews, you saw that from the opening tip, them playing with that type of grit and intensity. And it's the reason that Iowa State was uncomfortable the entire time. And it's the reason that, once again, Texas is hoisting their second Big 12 championship trophy in just the last three seasons. So Iowa State in the first half, right, in 20 minutes of basketball, only scored 21 points, right? Texas was on them the entire time. And they were doing a good job of defending without fouling because Iowa State did not shoot their first free throws in this game last night until about two or three minutes left in the second quarter, right? And so, you know, they were defending them super hard, but they weren't fouling them because they didn't shoot free throws until basically, you know, the end of the first half. From the 325 mark of the first quarter, remember in women's basketball, it's four 10-minute quarters rather than two 20-minute halves. So from the 325 mark of the first quarter to the 325 mark of the second quarter, that's 10 game minutes, right? Iowa State only scored two points. 
from the 325 mark of the first quarter until halftime. So that's 13 minutes and 25 seconds of game time. Iowa State only scored 11 points, right? So Texas did such a good job defensively in the first half. And then, you know, ultimately in the second half, they started to get into the post, get some buckets, uh, get into a rhythm, and they scored 32, but it just was never enough, right? Texas never uh, trailed in this game. And, you know, it was at 20. They were able to get it down to about 12, but then Texas got it right back up to 18. And they controlled the game for the full 40 minutes. Like Rodney Terry says, worked the game for 40 minutes. Vic Schaefer's team went out there and worked the game for 40 minutes, right? In 40 minutes, they forced 20 turnovers, scored over 20 points off turnovers, had nine steals and five blocks. So they were just everywhere defensively. I'm sure Iowa State felt like they were playing against six women, not five, right? Taylor Jones had a tough time inside with Adi Crooks. You know, no shame there. Adi Crooks is one of the best players in the country, uh, true freshman. I think she ended up with like 25 points and nine rebounds after not scoring in the first quarter. So she definitely turned it on uh, the last three. But Taylor Jones did have three blocks and one steal inside. So she did make her mark on the defensive in even though she had a tough time with one of the best players in the country in the post Shay holly did a masterful job defensively on emily ryan forcing four steals and blocking a shot herself right emily ryan a forced year player at Iowa State that was one of the biggest reasons they won that championship last year. So Shea Holly did a really good job uh, defending her and making Emily Ryan uncomfortable, who was the veteran leader of that Iowa State basketball team. And then you have to talk about Madison Booker. Right. We talked about the defensive end and, and what they did. But offensively, Madison Booker was a superstar. And I know, you know, with USC with freshmen, we talk about Juju Watkins and she's all world. Right. And I know at Notre Dame with Hannah Hidalgo, we talk about her and she's all world. But Madison Booker absolutely needs to be in that conversation. Since Rory Harmon has gone down, she has scored 13 points in every single game since Rory Harmon went down with that ACL injury, taking over for the point guard position. And she is playing it flawlessly. Right. You love to think about what this team would look like with Rory Harmon and Madison Booker in this role at full strength. But this Texas team is in good hands with number 35, right? <laughs> she may be the second number 35 to play basketball at the University of Texas and have her number retired at the University of Texas. And of course, right, you probably guessed it, but it's true. She does wear number 35 because of Kevin Durant. And when you watch her, you see some Kevin Durant in her game. So you just talk about the monster performance she had last night, played all 40 minutes in a championship game as a true freshman. The moment was not too big for her at all. Had six rebounds and five assists. I believe three or four of the threes that Texas made came off of her assist and did a good job grabbing the boards as well. Scored 26 points on straight buckets. Yeah, she's Kevin Durant for real. Lil' Kevin Durant scored 26 points on straight buckets. Only one layup and no free throws. The, the rest were just straight mid-ranges and three-pointers, right? Straight buckets. A little KD for sure. She does such a good job playing with poise, navigating the high ball screen, the high pick and roll, um, getting to her spots to get her shot off. She can go left or right off the dribble. I saw a snapback dribble. Um, I mean, she's just cold, right, in that mid-range. Knocked down the only two threes she made so she can extend from range. She got to the rim, made a couple baseline jumpers, uh, you know, made a layup, and then did a really good job of manipulating the defense to set up her teammates, whether that was for open threes or getting the ball down in the post. So Madison Booker is a superstar. You know, I hate that they can't jump to the NBA, you know, like basketball players can after one year, but I would thoroughly enjoy watching Madison Booker for her full college career at the University of Texas because she is a dog, and I cannot wait to see her and Roy Harmon together when Roy Harmon comes back uh, healthy. But like I said, Madison Booker, it's her time right now. She needs to be in that Juju Watkins, Hannah Hidalgo conversation as one of the best freshmen in the country. And I believe she'll be the second number 35 to have her number retired at the University of Texas. And then, of course, everybody else contributed offensively, especially Shaylee Gonzalez and Shay Holly making five threes. Taylor Jones made some uh, good buckets inside. Jones did a really good job. Of, I mean, not Jones. Um, the other post player, I can't remember her name right now, and I didn't write it down. Actually, I'm not even going to do her like that. Hold on. Give me a second. We got time. <laughs> I'm not even going to do her like that because she played hard. She did such a good job last night. Is it Leah Moore? Aaliyah Moore, there we go. I knew it. I should have just went with my gut. Yeah, and Aaliyah Moore, she did a really good job, had 14 points and six rebounds and made a lot of mid-range shots as well. So when you look at it for the NCAA tournament, uh, Texas is currently projected as a two seed. Um, I think they'll find out officially on Sunday for Selection Sunday, but I think they can compete with anybody in the country. The way that they play defense, right, riding the bull, you know, like Big Schaefer likes to say, and the way that Madison Booker can take over any game as a true freshman and be the best offensive player on the floor, 
on the floor, the way that they can score in the post, defend in the post, and the way that they can make threes on the outside. I definitely think this Texas team can beat anybody in the NCAA tournament. So congrats again to Vic Schaefer and his basketball team for winning their second Big 12 championship in just the last three seasons. A quick word from our sponsors, and then we talk about the men's baseball team and basketball team before we get out of here. Today's episode of Locked On Longhorns is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. I just want to reiterate one more time that performance from Madison Booker last night in the Big 12 championship game as a true freshman. 26 points on straight jump shots in one layup. I mean... <laughs> Please, if you did not watch that game, please go watch Madison Booker. Type in Madison Booker highlights or something. I promise you it looked like you were watching uh, young Kevin Durant. I don't know who I can compare her to on the women's side, but she's one of the best I've ever seen. Right, The way she was playing basketball last night. That was a hell of a performance. right? One of the best you'll ever see at the 40 in a big pressure moment in a championship game. As a true freshman, she was in high school last year. All right? I don't think I'm understating how great she was last night on the court. All right, Talking about the Texas baseball team moving forward, right? Uh, they're now 10 and six on the season and now three and one since that four game losing streak going into last weekend. So I know, you know, at Texas fans, we demand excellence. Right. And so, you know, we can be high. We can be really high and we can be really low. Right. One day it's extend the coast. The next day is fire. Right. But it just goes to show you how fast things change in college athletics. Right. You know, two weeks ago we were talking about a four game losing streak. And now since then, they're three and one. Right. Since that four game losing streak against Texas Tech and now Incarnate Word after beating Incarnate Word seven and one at home last night to get to double digit wins on the season, 10 and six once again. And I think when you look at the pitching, the pitching has been the storyline for the Texas baseball team thus far uh, for this season. Right. And the pitching has been comically up and down. Right. Or I guess the the better word that we should use in sports is inconsistent. <laughs> it's been very inconsistent this season, depending on who the Longhorns play. Right. They had a seven game stretch between playing the first game against LSU in Houston and then playing the last game against Texas Tech, where they gave up six runs plus in every single one of those games. And then in two games against Texas Tech and, and not Texas Tech, Iowa State, no, not Iowa State, geez, Texas State, right? <laughs> two games against Texas State and Vanderbilt, they gave up 10 plus runs in both of those games in back to back days. So the pitching has not been, <laughs> you know, um, the standard at the University of Texas this season. But when you look on the flip side, last night they only allowed one run on seven base runners across nine innings. That's a dominant pitching performance. And they did three weeks ago, right, or whenever it was, sweep Cal Poly with three straight shutouts, right? So, you know, people will say it's depending on the competition, right? Obviously, Cal Poly and um, Incarnate Word can't compare to LSU, Vanderbilt, Texas State, Texas A&M, or Texas Tech, right? But it is funny that, you know, the pitching has been that inconsistent, that it seems like for a seven game stretch, we can't give up less than six runs. And then we play another team and we shut them out three straight times or play another team. And we only give up seven base runners in ninth innings. Right. So <laughs> I guess we'll see. Right. We'll see how they pitch against Washington, because I have no idea this weekend. Grant Fontenot started the game, pitched three scoreless. Cole Selvig came in and pitched three innings of just one run ball. David Shaw, Andrew DePlanter and Hudson Toll locked down the seventh, eighth and ninth given the Longhorns three scoreless innings in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. And so they only got that one run that Cole Selvig game gave up in the seventh inning, I believe, sixth inning, I believe, excuse me. Offensively, Jared Thomas hit a two-run homer in the third inning, which was their first hit of the game. So if you're going to make the fans wait till the third inning to get your first hit, you might as well do it in style, two-run homer. 
Texas scored three more runs in the fourth, courtesy of four walks and two hits. And then Ryan Galvin hit a two-run homer in the fifth to get to seven runs on the day. So once again, winning 7-1, you know, it's incarnate word. It's a game they should win. They're at home. It's a game that they should win. But nonetheless, it's baseball. You still got to go out there and hit. You still got to go out there and pitch. And you still got to go out there and play good defense. And that's what they did last night. And hopefully – they can continue that. The Texas football team has lost two straight games to Washington. Hopefully the baseball team can avenge that loss for the football team and sweep the Washington Huskies in the dish this weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now we're talking about the Texas basketball team who starts their defense of the Big 12 tournament uh, today as they play Kansas State at 6 p.m. And here are my five keys to victory if Texas wants to move on and play tomorrow in the tournament, right? I think the first thing is pressure defense, right? They've been playing a different brand of defense since that Texas Tech game. That's why they've won every game since that Texas Tech game, except for Baylor. And they looked really good in that game until Dylan Dessou went down. And I think that just kind of took the air out of everybody's sails, right? But lean on the defense you've been playing since Texas Tech in your last game against Oklahoma. You did allow 80 points. They kind of got to the free throw line a lot at the end of the game. But you did score 23 points off turnovers against Oklahoma, bringing that defensive intensity. Defense travels, offense always does it. But you can bring your defense to Kansas City like you did last year. And if you do that today, you should win this game. Tyrese Hunter had his career high last game with 30. And every game moving forward, he needs to to play as decisive as he did on Saturday. Obviously, he doesn't need to score 30. He doesn't even need to score 20 every game, but I do think he needs to be a legitimate second or third option every night. You know, either uh, it's Max Aceman's being second and he's third, or either he's second and Max Aceman's is third. And of course, Dylan Dessou, first team all Big 12, will be your number one offensive option every night. And hopefully he plays like your number one offensive option um, every night. But Tyrese Hunter, those shots are there for him every game. But a lot of times he, you know, plays indecisive. He defers too much and kind of just stands at the three-point line and watches like we do, <laughs> right, Max Aceman and Dylan Dessou but if he can get involved offensively that just adds so much to this Texas basketball team and I think he's a really good offensive player when he plays like he wants to be a really good offensive player and plays decisive we've seen him explode for 20 points earlier this year with the game winner against Baylor 30 against Oklahoma on Saturday 26 last year against Gonzaga when Gonzaga was still a really good basketball team so Tyrese Hunter can score with anybody in the country when he decides to for the rest of the season he needs to decide to right Number three is attack the glass, win with effort plays, right? Kendall Weaver, Brock Cunningham, they're going to make the, you know, the, the margin plays. They're going to get on the floor, die for loose balls and get those extra possessions for you. But rebounding off the glass, whether it's Dylan Mitchell, Dylan Dessou, Caden Shedrick, you have to play big in the post, right? You cannot la allow them to win the rebounding matchup you have to win that matchup in terms of rebounding especially on the offensive boards getting extra opportunities for your offense but defensive rebounding making sure they don't get extra opportunities for their offense that's part of defense too finishing the job not just defending the shot but grabbing the rebound as well because if you play great defense for 20 seconds they miss the shot and get the ball right back all that defense you just played went out the window right finish the job defend hard and then grab the rebound right play for the full possession. Number four is knock down open shots, right? You know, that's something that's plagued this team offensively this year, the inability to knock down open shots. And so then you run into a situation where you have to play hero ball, right? And have to rely on, um, you know, Tyrese Hunter, Max Smith, or Dylan DeSue to carry you offensively, right? They're going to be able to create open shots in this offense, whether it's in the mid range or the three point line for players like Brock Cunningham, IT Horton, Kendall Weaver, Tyrese Hunter at times, right? Maybe even Max Smith, depending on how much attention they pay to Dylan DeSue, right? And so when you get those open opportunities, you have to be decisive and you have to knock them down right you can't get an open pass at the three-point line and uh uh and then pass it to max acements right <laughs> like get the ball shoot it and knock down open shots and when they knock down open shots it takes so much pressure off of this texas offense they can score a lot of points right they can be really good offensively but that starts with knocking down open shots and that's been inconsistent for them this entire season better late but inconsistent throughout the entire season and jump on them early control the flow of the game because of their inconsistency in terms of shooting the outside shot texas is not a team that's built or equipped to come from behind right they can because max ace miss tyrese hunter you know kendall weaver it horton brock cunningham can make threes right so essentially you could get hot and make threes and, and make a comeback in that game like we did against iowa state where dylan DeSue went crazy and we made up 12 points in the second half but it just wasn't enough 
But I think if, you know, Texas is to get down 10 to 15 points in this game and they're trailing for a large point of this game, it's just going to be hard for them to consistently make outside shots and shoot their way back into it, right? Texas needs to control the game with their defense and their half-court offense, get out into transition, get some easy buckets, but you cannot get in you cannot get down early into this game and then try to shoot your way back into the game because from what we've seen over the course of the season, that's not Texas strength at least this version of the Texas basketball team. But I think they're better than Kansas State. They beat Kansas State last time they played, and Texas played one of their worst games of the season. I think that Texas should do very well against Kansas State today and move on to the next round of the NCAA tournament tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The last time the men played in the tournament, they won the championship. The last time the women played in the tournament, they won the championship. Men, let's get out of the Big 12 with another tournament champions.